The Kim Potter trial continued on Wednesday with more testimony from Potter's weapons instructor. Wednesday's testimony also included opinions from an expert witness brought in by the state. Potter says she mistook her firearm for her taser. On Wednesday, the defense got to cross-examine Sergeant Michael Peterson, Potter's instructor, asking him how such a mistake can happen. Mistakes can happen when someone confuses a taser with a gun. Correct. And it can be an innocent mistake. Certainly can be. The jury was told by the judge to disregard that last answer after an objection by the prosecution. Peterson also testified that stopping a vehicle is one of the higher dangers for officers. After hearing from Peterson, prosecutors brought forth an expert witness, a professor from the University of South Carolina who is also a former police officer. This particular witness said he reviewed all of the body cam evidence as well as thousands of pages of written documentation. He was asked to assess whether the use of lethal force would be appropriate in the Dante Wright traffic stop. The use of deadly force was not appropriate and the evidence suggests that a reasonable officer in, officers, in Officer Potter's position could not have believed that it was proportional to the threat at the time. The professor was paid to review the case, testifying that he received $9,000 in compensation. According to his testimony, the professor's view was an independent analysis and not influenced by the state. A longtime Brooklyn Center music store and company headquarters will be moving to Bloomington in the first part of the year. The music retailer has been operating right off 694 in Brooklyn Center for about 40 years. It will relocate to a building near Interstate 494 and Highway 100, where Life Touch Photography used to be. We will have the ability to expand. We are now cramped here. We don't have enough room to do what we want to do and can do. And so as a hub for all of our other stores, it's important that we have the facilities that can accommodate that. Thompson says one thing everyone is looking forward to having in the new location is windows. There are currently none in the Brooklyn Center location. Schmidt Music has 13 stores in six states and several stores in Minnesota. It will be closing its Adina location at the end of the year. The City of Brooklyn Center has been gathering information on the renaming of the Earl Brown Heritage Center. They held two discussions, both in person and on Zoom, and there's also a survey too. On the survey, participants are asked to vote on a name. The options are the Barnes, Ruby Red Farm, Red Farm Crossings, or a fill in the blank. They also asked for input on the logo. The survey closes on the 15th. The namesake Earl Brown came under scrutiny because of an alleged racist past. There are four candidates who filed to represent the East District on the Brooklyn Park City Council. The seat was vacated when Lisa Jacobson was sworn in as mayor. On the list are XP Lee, who worked for Brooklyn Park and has been involved in several committees. LaDon Severin, a mother of six who says she has always wanted to be involved in local politics. Abraham Ba is the current chairman of the Organization of Liberians in Minnesota. And Benjamin Asimenem, who previously ran for the East District seat. Election day is on February 8th, but absentee voting begins on December 27th. There's a plan for what comes next on a parcel of land where a daycare building burned down early last year. An overnight fire destroyed the Kindercare Academy building in the 7900 block of Xerxes Avenue North in March of 2020. The property was sold and this week the City Council approved a proposal to redevelop the property to a 21 unit two story assisted living facility called Estera Care. There's no word on when construction will begin. Pickleball is growing in popularity locally and so much so that Maple Grove is expanding its options for players of all ages. Here's reporter Nina Bupasavan. If you're into tennis, ping pong or badminton, pickleball might be the sport for you. For these guys behind me, pickleball is their sport. They're part of a growing following here in Maple Grove that has a city working towards creating more places to play in the future. During the winter months, Pickleball lovers make use of a few local parks and this gym at Maple Grove Middle School. It's just enough to get by. We've had over 100 people in here and that, that gets to be a bit much. Uh, so it's really important if we could figure out a way to, to get more courts. And it seems to be growing. Even during the pandemic, players were staying active. But if there's another school shutdown... We're done. We have nowhere to go. And while there are no current plans for indoor pickleball courts, 
Some outdoor ones are in the works to address the need. In 2019, the Maple Grove Park Board approved a feasibility study for a new pickleball complex. That study took into consideration community input, multiple concept plans, and implementation costs, a vision that is moving forward now and will likely take shape at Lakeview Knowles Park with an expected construction start date of next summer or fall. We've been working on that for over five years. James Clandy has been playing pickleball since 2012 and he's one of many looking forward to the additions. We're very happy to see that it's coming into fruition. They've got a consultant now and uh, we're laying out courts and hopefully by next year we should have some courts. Courts that will provide more options and hopefully keep more players coming back for more. It's a sport you're going to play for a long time and people just absolutely like playing. Keeps people young when you're getting to be up in my age. <laughs> a funding for the Pickleball Expansion Project will come from the Park Development Program in 2021. Nina Bupasavan, CCX News. Sometimes a little gratitude goes a long way. We are here at Pilgrim Elementary and we got a whole list of letters of thank yous for the things that the employees of the City of Crystal do. As part of the Gratitude Project, students wrote thank you notes to Crystal City staff as a way to say thank you to police, fire, public works employees, and others. And so we talked a lot about um, the different things that, um, the different components of what the city workers do. And so, um, and then being that we have well, over 15 students from specifically the City of Crystal, the buses go through Crystal. It's a, it's a really good connection for the students to learn from. Students presented the letters on Tuesday afternoon. For the third straight season, the University of Wisconsin women's volleyball team is in the NCAA Tournament's Final Four. Two Champlain Park High School graduates are a big part of the Badgers' success. It's the last week of college volleyball for super senior Sydney Hilly. The Wisconsin setter keys the Badgers' dynamic offense. Wisconsin enters the Final Four with a 29-3 record, with a win over Minnesota in the regional final. Hilly back to Redke and the Badgers bust into the national semifinals. Hilly earned All-American honors for a third time in her career on Wednesday. And she's the three-time Big Ten setter of the year. Ashburn, like Hilly, has played in all 32 Wisconsin matches this season. The junior defensive specialist broke her own school record for ace serves in a season and keyed her first set win over Minnesota last weekend. Next up for Ashburn, Hilly, and the Badgers is top-ranked and unbeaten Louisville. Wisconsin and Louisville play Thursday night with the national championship match scheduled for Saturday. In girls basketball, Maple Grove started 0-3 against tough opponents. They look to win their third straight Tuesday night. Jason Malillo has more. In girls basketball, Maple Grove hosting Rogers. Second half action, Crimson sophomore Claire Stern drives and finishes with the left hand plus a foul. MG up 11. But the Royals trim the lead to six. Nice pass by Caitlin Machi to Ellie Buzzle, and it's 63-57. Kennedy click, crossover, dribble, drive, and she gets the end one for Grove. Then a sweet pass by Click to Ari Gordon for the hoop, part of a 15-2 run. Click scores 21, and Maple Grove wins 83-67. Jason Malillo, CCX Sports. Thanks, Jason. The White Zeta wrestling team isn't at full strength this season, but they still have a strong squad. G. Wilcox reports. It's hard not to think what if for the Wyzetta wrestlers. Season ending injuries to two of their best wrestlers, state contenders Logan Swenson and Cal Lonquist, along with a couple of other injuries, are obstacles to overcome. We just have to work harder. We just have to overcome those challenges. Like, like it's not just gonna be a steady road to the state championship. There's gonna be challenges and stuff, so. We just gotta move forward. I mean, it really sucks that those guys are out, but we can't let that set us back. I mean, we still have that goal at the end of the year to go to state and win state, so we can't let anything get in the way of that. Injuries aside, there is still good talent on hand for the 10th-ranked Trojans. Kyler Wong at 145 pounds and Adam Cherney at 170 are rated third in their weight class. Luke Coonan at 106 and Dominic Heim at 220 are ranked second. This is still a formidable team. With tournament championships under their belts the last two weekends at Osseo and Chanhassen, the Trojans are gearing up for three prestigious events. 
the Minnesota Christmas Tournament, the Rumble on the Red, and the Clash over the next few weeks against high caliber competition. Oh, I'm really excited for that. I mean, this stretch right here, we got Clash, Rumble, Christmas Tournament. We get to see a lot of the guys we're gonna see at state. This is like a really big time in the wrestling season, this kind of winter break coming up with the Clash, Rumble, Christmas Tournament. This kind of sees where we're at and how much harder we need to work to get to where we wanna be by the end of the season. Those are tournaments that separate kids who are looking, uh, who have college aspirations. So it also will separate teams and individuals when we're talking about state rankings and what may happen in uh, March in the Excel Center. The tournaments will give YZ a good measuring stick as they get into the heart of the schedule. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.